I haven't talked about the floor yet. Let's talk about the floor. What's this down here? Oh, it's episode 17. Floor. It's a suspended timber floor made of joists, with a small gap underneath it for ventilation and putting in things that I've forgotten. So if we were looking at a cross section of the joists, end on like this, the first thing I need to do is complete this vapor permeable barrier along the underside. But that's difficult because there's only a small gap there I can't get underneath to fix it on. I could do this and lay the membrane over each joist, but it's a bit of a faff. And also, I'm quite keen on this being rodent proof, because the minute you introduce insulation between these joists, you also make a nice cosy mouse hotel. So I'd like to put some kind of barrier underneath it here. The other thing is, since I'm building the floor from scratch, I thought I might as well put some underfloor heating pipes in, like this, so that at some point in the future I might be able to run the place on a heat pump. Now, the solutions for fitting underfloor heating pipes between the rafters of a suspended timber floor seems to mostly involve large slabs of expanded foam. Often people put a batten in there and a big slab of expanded foam like that and then kind of a aluminium tray goes on top. And then the pipes go in the aluminium tray. The aluminium tray helps spread the heat from the pipes. And then the floorboard goes on top of that. And this big slab of expanded foam has the effect of mechanically holding the pipe up against the underside of the floorboard. You can also get expanded foam covered in foil with these grooves built into it for putting the pipes in. You can make that solution in one. Trouble is with that, it's made of expanded foam. If you want to use some low impact fleece insulation like sheep's wool or hemp fibre, then you can have the problem that there's nothing holding that aluminium tray up. So it's going to sag unless you put some battens in there or something to hold the, the pipes up against the underside of the board and put the insulation in underneath it, which is a faff. And then there still isn't a solution for completing this vapour permeable membrane on the bottom. So I decided to sack all of that off and use cork instead. First of all, I put a batten on the bottom of my joists and then a piece of OSB that sits in there. An OSB is already slightly permeable, but then I drill some holes in it to increase the permeability and put a piece of membrane on top of it. So that closes the envelope of the vapor permeable barrier and gives me uh, a solid mechanical base to push down on. And then I fill the space up with cork insulation boards. Into the top of those, I can just use a router to cut the notches for the underfloor heating pipes. Put a bit of aluminium foil there to act as a, a deflector and a heat spreader. Punch it with some holes to make sure that it isn't a vapour barrier. Put the pipes in, board goes on top. Simple. Actually, this is also a bit of a faff and it's kind of an experiment, but um, I think it'll work. So let's see how it goes. The, um, the holes in this OSB are quite laborious, but I suppose if you were doing it at scale, you could use a CNC machine to do that. And uh, the cork is a bit more expensive than doing it with a fleece insulation. So with a small floor, it's about 250 quid more. But in order to get this solution to work so kind of elegantly, I thought it was worth it. And of course you're saving money on the uh, aluminium tray and the other bits. So first of all, you're going to need some joists and the best way to put joists in place is using an action montage. Joist, 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 lay them down all in a line, getting ready for some floorboards. It's way easier than doing it yourself. 
Here is the finished floor, all ready for sealing up and insulating. You can see I've got the OSB in place and the holes drilled. You can drill through all the boards at once so it doesn't take as long as it looks. Ta -da! So now it's time for some membrane. Yeah. I'm just putting a bead of gunge around here to make an air seal and then sticking it down. Whoa, look at that. Fiddly, but kind of pretty nonetheless. Now it's time to put all of this cork in there. It's a bit hard to mark this stuff up. So I've made myself a marking gauge, the width of the joist separation. Just put it on there like that and drag myself a little line that I can place the rail saw on. And it all fits nice and tight. That's the first layer finished, the 80 mil cork slabs. Now there's a second layer of 100 mil cork slabs to bring it up flush with the top of the joists. It's done. So there you have it. There's a floor. I don't want to muck everything up, so I think for now I'm just going to put some plywood down on it and then come in and do all the really dirty stuff like putting hempcrete in the walls. And then I'll come along later and put some heating pipes and floorboards down. Perhaps I'll make another episode about that at the end. But for now, I'm all done with the floor. So, like, subscribe, donate, bye. What? Like, subscribe, donate, bye. That's not going to work. You're going to need to slow down a bit. Okay, if you like this video and you like to know when I make more, then please hit the like and subscribe buttons because that will help the algorithm show the video to people who I don't know yet. And if you'd like to support me in making more of this kind of thing by donating £5 or more a month, then you can follow the link in the description box to the Patreon page and do that. And I'll be really, really grateful and give you things if I can think of anything to give you. But for now, I've got to go. Uh, I'll see you soon. I hope you have the rest of a wonderful day and um, take care. Bye. Bye. Can I go now? Yes, well done. You sounded very normal.